Well, what do you do? Get going on game number two of this doubleheader. The Waverly Show Rock Gohawks defeat the Decorah Vikings in game number one by a six to one margin. And we're about ready to go in game number two as Tori Hartman will lead off against Cassie Rodding, getting the start here in game two for Waverly Show Rock. And the first pitch to Hartman is on the outside edge for a strike. It's nothing and one. Tori in game number one was 0 for 3 with three ground outs. We'll give you the Decora lineup here as we go. Rodding delivers the 0-1 offering swung on a pop-up right side. Ali Yarns under it at second base will make the catch for the first out here in the first inning. It's Hartman in center, Smith in left, Waite in right, Shelton pitching. Maria Hoime at second, Shelby Stauberger behind the plate. Tess Olinger, the designated player. Becca Alcock at first base, Peyton Jurlett at shortstop. And in the 10th spot, Jenna Iverson at third base. Lindsey Smith will look at first one low, one ball, no strikes. Lindsey was one for three, reached on an error, and had a single in game one. As the next pitch taken high, it's two balls, no strikes. Lindsey was the only Decorah base runner past the second inning against Sarah DeMuth. The pitch in there for a strike, it is two and one. Rachel Kurth in left, Brianna Spears in center, Andrea Groen in right for the Gohawks, Riley Emerson at third, April Sherburn at short, at second, Allie Arns is that one looped towards second, and Allie Arns, she'll have to hurry, she'll quick throw to first base, and the throw was by the first baseman, Stacy Martin, but Smith would have reached anyway, so Lindsey Smith with her second hit of the night. An infield hit with one out here in the first inning, and Chelsea Twait will come to the plate. Chelsea 0 for 3 in game number 1. Continuing with the defense, Allie Arns at second, Stacy Martin at first, Emily Brown behind the plate, and Cassie Rodding in the circle. The pitch taken high by Chelsea Twait. One ball, no strikes. No score here in game 2. Twait was 0 for 3 in game number 1. Rodding, just a freshman. The pitch swung on and missed. It is one ball, one strike. Rodding did not face Decorah. As a pitcher in the game up in Decorah last Friday night. 1-1 delivery, swinging a foul back to the screen, and it's one ball, two strikes now on Twait. Riding 5-1, 2.50 ERA, opponent sitting 187 against her, 36 in the third innings, 29 hits, 13 earned runs, 12 walks, and 32 strikeouts. 1-2, inside, just missed the corner, and it's two balls, two strikes on Chelsea Twait. Lexi Shelton doing the pitching here in game number two will be on deck. This is Vikings Radio 1240 KDEC to Cora. The pitch swung on, popped up foul, third base side, and out of play. And the count stays put at two balls and two strikes. Smith, the runner at first with one down. Rodding delivers, and the pitch taken high. Runner goes, throw down to second base, goes into center field. Smith will steal second. Backing up from center field was Brianna Spears to prevent Lindsay from going any further. Lindsay now with four stolen bases on the season. It's now 3-2 and two on Chelsea Twait. The 3-2 delivery swung on a fly ball right field. Underneath it is Andrea Grone. She will make the catch, tagging at second, heading to third as Lindsey Smith throw there is not in time. As Grone actually made that play closer than most expected. As Lindsey hustled to third and a wraparound slide got her to third base. And Lexi Shelton will try to get her home with two outs. Shelton won for three in game number one. She scored Decorah's only run. The Hawks took that one six to one. And the pitch taken up by Lex. One ball, no strikes. Roddick delivers. Pitch taken up again. It is two balls, no strikes. Roddick just a freshman. Youth was a sophomore in game number one, so some good young pitching for the women of Coach Skinner. It's the pitch taken at the knees and for a strike. It is two balls and one strike on Lexi Schultz. 
Pitch swung on, popped up, foul. Third base side, not a play, so it's two balls, two strikes. Wind's starting to pick up. It's become a cloudy night. The lights have been turned on here at the Gohawk Softball Diamond. Directly behind the high school as that one popped up, foul, straight back in, out of play. So we'll do it again at two balls and two strikes. Two and two, the count with two down. First inning, no score. Riding delivers and the 2-2. Swung on a little number up the third base side foul. And two balls, two strikes. The count remains on Lexi Shelton. Two-two delivery. Inside corner with the fastball taken for strike three. The Vikes get one hit and leave a runner. We head to the bottom of the first inning. It is Decora nothing and Waverly Showrock coming to bat. And the Gohawks will bat with a very similar lineup to game number one. Leading off the shortstop, April Sherburn, batting second at third base, Briley Emerson. Hitting third at first base, Stacy Martin. Batting fourth, the catcher, Emily Brown. Hitting fifth at second base is Allie Arns. Hitting sixth, the designated player, Mackenzie Lillibridge. Hitting seventh in left field, Rachel Kurth. Hitting eighth in right field, Andrea Grone. Batting ninth in center field, Brianna Spears and Cassie Roddick. It's in the 10th spot doing the pitching. That lineup will face Lexi Shelton getting the start here in game number two. Hartman was the losing pitcher in game one. Shelton threw the final three of the game last Friday night. Three innings, three hits, one unearned run, no walks, and two strikeouts. Lexi getting her 13th start or 16th appearance, five and seven. A 403 ERA, 222 opponents batting average against. 80 innings, 91 hits, 46 earned runs, 45 walks, and 61 strikeouts. April Sherburn will lead things off. She was two for four with a run scored in an RBI in game one. She'll look at a strike, nothing in one. Lindsey Smith is in left. Tori Hartman in center and Chelsea Twayton right. And this one is that one hit deep towards left field over the head of Smith. One hop against the fence. Sherburn will stand at second with a double. An 0-1 pitch in the wheelhouse of Sherburn and she gets her third hit of the double header. Runner at second, nobody out. Briley Emerson stands in, 0 for 3, reached on an error and sacrificed in the first inning. Shelton delivers, Emerson bunts third base side, and it's a beauty. Jenna Iverson can do nothing but eat it. And actually, the base umpire is going to say that the ball hit Emerson while she was in the batter's box. So it's no balls and one strike. And now the home plate umpire and the base umpire will get together. And they're going to say it was a foul ball. Tom Sullivan and Robert Ber- Bergren working together tonight. No balls, one strike to count. Another bunt by Emerson, this time up the right side, but it's a foul ball as Stolberger pounces on it. As it rolls into foul territory, the Decorah infield, Jenna Iverson at third, Peyton Drewitt at short, at second is Maria Hoime at first, Becca Alcock, Shelby Stolberger behind the plate, and Lexi Shelton in the circle. The ball's two strikes to count. And the 0-2 delivery, swinging a foul back to the screen. It is still no balls, two strikes on Emerson as Coach Skinner taking the bunt off with two strikes. Pitch high. One ball, two strikes to count. Runner at second, nobody out. The one-two delivery, a changeup swung on, popped up right side. And it's a foul ball out of play. And 
the netting above the backstop on the right side of the plate. One ball and two strikes. Lexi ready, another 1-2 offering. Sales high for two balls, two strikes. Nobody out here in the first inning of a scoreless game. Go Hawks took game one, 6-1. to one. Shelton delivers the pitch, 2-2. Two, two. Outside corner, strike three call. Emerson called out on a fastball on the outside edge. One on, one out here in the bottom of the first inning. No score. Stacy Martin in game number one was one for two with a double, two walks. First pitch outside from Shelton. One ball, no strikes. Lexi ready. And the changeup taken on the inside edge for a strike. To the left hand hitting first baseman of the Go Hawks. Martin caught in game one. Brown played first base, vice versa. Here in game number two. 1 1. Outside is two balls and one strike count. Sherburn at second. She's there because of a leadoff double. The 2 1 is outside for three balls and one strike now on Stacy Martin. Cleanup hitter, Emily Brown on deck. A 3 1 lead for, or a 3 and 1 count as the pitch taken at the letters for a strike. And it's three balls and one strike count. Pitch gets away from Stahlberger outside, so it'll be a walk. It'll be a wild pitch as Sherburn moves up to third. And Martin draws the one-out walk. So runners at the corners for the Go Hawks and one down. Go Hawks threatening early on. Emily Brown was two for four with three RBI in game number one. The pitch taken low. It got away from Stahlberger, but not enough to warrant runner advancement, at least from third. Martin will take off and take second. One ball, new strikes to count on Brown. Vikes got a little lucky as that one hit the foot of the umpire as it was rolling by beyond Shelby. 1-0 delivery taken on the outside edge for a strike. It's one ball, one strike. Go Hawks got their 19th win in game number one. One and one with one down. The one one delivery is outside for two balls, one strike. Second and third with one down. The pitch catches the outside edge for a strike at the letters. It is two balls and two strikes to count. Lexi ready, 2-2 delivery, swung on, hammer, deep left field, and that ball is gone. <laughs> Emily Brown with her fifth home run. RBI is 28-29 and 30. And the Go Hawks take an early 3-0 lead in this one. A 2-2 pitch into the wheelhouse of Brown. She hit that one directly into the wind. I didn't think there was a lot of doubt about it once it left the bat. Wind must have knocked it down some as Hartman went to the fence, lunged back, and couldn't quite get there. Three in, bases empty, one down. Allie Arns takes a pitch low, one ball, no strikes. Arns was one for two with a double and two walks. In game number one. one zero. Pitch taken low. It is two balls, no strikes. So the Goa Hawks out with a vengeance here in game number two. As the pitch taken well high. It's three balls, no strikes. They scored three in their final time up in game number one. 
The 3-0 delivery taken all the way is Arns, and she'll take for a strike. And it's three balls and one strike. And the next pitch goes high, second walk of the inning for Shelton. Runner at first, three in, one down. And Mackenzie Lillibridge will bat. She pinch hit once in game number one and popped out. And the pitch in there for a strike is no balls in, one strike. Oh, one from Shelton. Taking a low, it is one ball, one strike to count. One, one. Taking a low again, two balls, one strike. So a double, a strikeout, a walk, a three run homer by Brown, and a walk. That's how the bottom of the first inning has gone. Two and one with one down, pitch swung on, popped up, foul. Third base side and out of play. So the count goes to two and two now on Mackenzie Lilbridge. Two and two, the count with one down. The pitch outside corner for strike three. Throw down to second base, not in time. So Lillibridge down on strikes. A runner at second and two down. Rachel Kurth will be the seventh batter of the inning in a 3 nothing Gohawk lead. The pitch taken a low. One ball, no strikes. Allie Earns with the steal. It's her ninth of the year. Kurth was one for three with a run scored in game number one. Gohawks took that one 6-1. They lead this one 3 nothing here in the first. Pitch swung on and missed. It is one ball and one strike count. One and one, and the livery swung on, popped up. Third base side, angling into foul ground is Peyton Jurlett at shortstop. She will make the catch, straddling the fair foul line, a step onto the outfield grass to retire the side. Three runs, two hits. No errors, one left. We head to the second inning. Go Hawks with a 3 nothing lead. Fourth straight night of nice weather for high school sports this week. Guys starting to cloud up a little bit. Wind blowing in a little bit, but all in all, a very comfortable night. Things not so comfortable on the scoreboard right now for the Vikings as they trail it three at nothing. A 6-1 win for Waverly Shellrock in game number one. Go Hawks took the first game in the season set last Friday night in Decorah by a 5-1 to one margin. Maria Hoime will look at the first pitch high. One ball, no strikes. Hoime. 0 for 3. Did reach on an error in game number 1, but struck out twice. 1-0. Swung on and missed. It is one ball, one strike. Riding. Got two, a pop out, a fly out, and a strike out in game number one or inning number one of game number two. That one fisted foul. Up the first base side, retrieved by Coach Skinner. A step out of the first base, Gohawk dugout. And it's one ball, two strikes now on Maria Hoime. She'll be followed by Stolberger and Olinger here in the second inning. The one two delivery outside, corner taken for strike three. Hoime retired on the strikeout. And Shelby Stahlberger will come to the plate. Shelby is 0 for 3, or was 0 for 3 in game number 1. 3-0 Gohawks here in the top of the second. Shelby swings and misses at some heat from Ronnie. The ball is one strike. Oh one. one Fisted right in front of the plate. It's a fair ball picked up behind the plate by Brown. Will throw to first base and Martin for a 2-3 put at. It was an excuse me swing that just rolled right in front of the plate. Stahlberger 
exited the box a moment after contact, and Brown ended up having plenty of time to make the play. Two down, nobody on. Second inning, 3 nothing. Go Hawks, and Olinger swings and misses at the first offering. Tess getting the start at DP. Here in game number two, she was 0-for-1 as a pinch hitter in game number one. 0-1 delivery, swung on and missed. It is no balls, two strikes now on Olinger. O2 from Roddick, ground ball right side. To her left is Allie Arns, picks it up, throws to first base, and on a bang-bang play, Olinger retired, and the side is out here in the second inning. Vikes go quietly, three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the second inning. It's a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock. Welcome back to Waverly Showrock. Coming up tomorrow morning on the Friday Sports Show. We're going to talk some uh, softball with a local boy done good. Darren Monroe is now the head coach at Rock Valley College in Rockford, Illinois, at the community college level. We're going to catch up with Darren tomorrow morning on the Friday Sports Show, 825 on AM 1240 KDEC. Darren, of course, a South Wind grad. And a Luther College grad as well. Three nothing Go Hawks. Eight nine and one for the Go Hawks here in the second inning. The highlight of that first inning: an Emily Brown three run homer for the Go Hawks. As the first pitch is taken low, it is one ball, no strikes. Grown did not bat, but appeared as a courtesy runner and scored two runs in game number one. Shelton ready one zero offering swing and a foul back to the screen. It is one ball, one strike. Lexi walked two, gave up a double and a home run. In game number one, she ended up striking, or in inning number one, struck out two as well as that one hammered towards center field. Tori Hartman is under it, and she will make the catch. And what ends up being medium depth center field. And Grown retired one down here in the second inning. That wind kind of blowing left to right, and that's got to be a little bit of a challenge when it comes to anything up in the air tonight. As Brianna Spears will come to the plate for the Go Hawks. First pitch outside. One ball, no strikes. She was 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored in game number 1. 3 0. The Go Hawks lead it here in inning number 2 of game number 2. The pitch swung on, popped up. Right side, foul ball, out of play. And it's 1 and 1 from Shelton. Pitch swung on, popped up left side. Jenna Iverson at third will make the catch in fair territory. Halfway between third base and home plate and a step into the infield. That's the second out of the inning. So two down. So ever since the Arns walk after the Brown home run, Shelton has settled down and retired four in a row. But now it's the top of the order in it. April Sherburn who looks at a strike, nothing in one. Sherbert double to left and scored in that first inning. 0-1. High. For one ball, one strike. Go Hawks looking for the double header sweep and the season sweep of Decora. Pitch inside. It is two balls and one strike. Two-one delivery, swung on a drive to left center field. Tori Hartman is under that one, and she will make the catch to retire the side. So three up, three down. We head to the third inning. It is Waverly Showrock leading Decora by a three-nothing margin. Welcome back to Waverly, a three-nothing lead for the Go Hawks here in game number two of that double header. Go Hawks took game number one. By a six to one margin. And Becca Alcock will stand in to start things here in the third. And the first one outside from Ronick. No balls and one strike. 
Alkak was uh, 0 for 2. In a game against Waverly last week, she's hitting 133 with no extra base hits and one RBI on the season. Pitch outside, one, two balls, no strikes on Alcock with Peyton Jurlin in the on-deck circle. Pitch swung on and missed. Changed pace, changed locations. And Alcock out in front. It's two balls, one strike. Two and one the count. The pitch swung on, popped up. Left center field coming on as the left fielder with a long run, Rachel Kirsch. She will make the catch in shallow left center. And that is now six in a row retired by Cassie Rodding, the freshman pitcher for the Gohawks. One down, nobody on for Peyton Jurlid. Jurlid, the slap hitter, will bat with the Vikings trailing 3 0. Drill had one for seven at the plate this year. The pitch outside. One ball, no strikes. Drill had has struck out twice, walked once. So her on base percentage is 250. Batting average 143. That one bunted straight up in the air. Caught right in front of home plate by the third baseman, Emerson. And that's the second out of the inning. So Drill had pops out. And two down and nobody on for the top of the order. And Tori Hartman, a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock. Tori popped out to second or first time up. She's 0 for 4 on the night, and she swings and misses at the first one. Nothing in one. Tori getting a start in center field in this game. After being the losing pitcher in game number one of this doubleheader. 0-1 delivery, sails high for one ball, one strike. One and one, the count on Hartman. And Emily Brown, three-run homer, the difference in this one. Drop ball just missed low from Ronick. It's two balls and one strike. Cora will have something new tomorrow night, a scheduled night off. It's their first scheduled night off since early June. Pitch swung on, fouled away. Granted, they've had some weather outs and everything like that, but... Monday through Saturday have been quite busy for Decora. 2-2 swung on, popped up right side. Out a step into the outfield grass is Allie Arns, and she'll snow cone it for the final out of the third inning. And for the second time in three frames, the fight's going order. Three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the third. It's 3-0 Waverly Showrock. Baseball returns to the airwaves tomorrow night. The Viking baseball team will take on Owine in Decora. We'll have it at 7.20 tomorrow night from Olin Zach Field in Decorah, right here on AM 1240 KDEC. Three nothing Go Hawks here in game two of the doubleheader. They won game one by a six to one margin, two, three, and four due for the Go Hawks here in the third to face Lexi Shelton. Riley Emerson looks the first one low and inside. One ball near strikes. Emerson struck out swinging in the first. Shelton has cut down five in a row ever since Arns walked in the first inning. That was a batter after Emily Brown took her deep to left center field. The 1-0 delivery swinging a foul back to the screen. It is one ball and one strike. Next week uh, we'll have softball on the air on uh, Monday night and Thursday night. Monday night, we'll have a rainout makeup against New Hampton at home at 7.20. That'll be the final home game of the year for the quarter. This pitch sails high. It's two balls and one strike. This is just my speculation. I highly doubt the quarter will get a home game on the postseason end of things. Two balls, one strike. The count in the pitch. Outside for three balls, one strike. Just, again, with the silliness that is this five-class system on the girls' end of things. Geographically, it's going to take Decorah having an unbelievably remarkable year to get anything at home. The pitch in there for a strike. It's now 3-2 and two on Briley Emerson. The 3-2 delivery. Swing and a foul back to the screen, so we'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. The 
unfortunately that's the case in softball and basketball and volleyball now. 3-2 delivery, swinging a foul back to the screen. Three balls, two strikes. Again, those postseason pairings will be released on Monday. They'll be available at IGHSAU.org. 3-2 delivery, swinging a foul ball, third base side. So, nine pitch of the at-bat coming up to Briley Emerson. Temperature's starting to cool, and wind's starting to blow in some more. They are calling for some showers later on tonight. But hopefully we can get a few more innings of softball and a few more runs on the visitor's side of the scoreboard before that happens. Swing and a foul back. If you're looking at speculations on the uh, 4A end of things, Decora, Charles City, and Waverly Showrock are the Northeast Iowa Conference schools in 4A. The rest of the league is in 3A. The 3 2 delivery swing and a foul back. So, number 11 about ready to throw her 11th pitch of this at bat. 3 0 Waverly Showrock here in the third inning. The 3 2 delivery smack towards third, and a foul ball. Again, if you'd have to speculate, I think it'd be awfully tough to send Decorah, Waverly, Showrock, and Charles City in opposite directions. That one hammered towards left field, retreating as Lindsey Smith. You will make the catch. And medium to deep left for the first out here in the third inning. So one down here in the third, and Stacy Martin to the plate. She walked and was on board for the Emily Brown home run back in the first inning. All the runs from one swing of the bat thus far. As Brown hit a three-run homer to left. 3-0 the score as the pitch in there for a strike on the outer half. No balls and one strike. Lexi has shut down six in a row ever since giving up a walk to Arns. Nice pitch outside corner. Taken for a strike again, and it's nothing and two. Oh, and two the count. Pitch swung on, popped up, foul. Third base side, not a play. Another two-strike foul ball as that one smacked in a left and a base hit. Stacy Martin ends the string of six in a row. Retired by Shelton with a one-out single here in the third. And Emily Brown, who provided the big blow of this game to this point, a three-run homer to left center in the first inning to give the Go Hawks the lead they have right now at 3 nothing. Brown takes the first pitch high. It's one ball, no strikes. one zero, And that one at the letters taken for a strike on a changeup from Shelton. And it's one ball, one strike. one one Change up, swung on, drive, center field and deep, retreating as Tori Hartman. She will run it down just to the right of the 208 sign and straightaway center, and that's the second out of the inning. There wasn't for, if it wasn't for a little bit of a breeze blowing straight in, I get the feeling Emily Brown might have had her second home run of the night. But Hartman stayed with it and ran it down. Again, it's starting to swirl a little bit. you got to imagine that anything in the air is going to be an adventure from this point on as Allie Arns looks at a strike, nothing and one. Arns walked in the first inning. 3 nothing Go Hawks as we play the bottom of the third. Go Hawks took game one, 6-1. to one. And the pitch on the outside edge for a strike. It is two strikes to nothing on Allie Arns. Shelton ready, the 0-2, swinging a foul. 
That one hit the top of the netting support on the right side of the backstop. O2 again, swing and a miss, strike three. Shelton gets her third strikeout, one hit, one left. Lexi has sh- settled down nicely ever since the first inning. We head to the top of the fourth. It's a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock. Lindsey Smith swings to the first one and fouls one down the right field line and out of play. The ball's one strike. Smith, the only base runner that Decor has had tonight. She got an infield hit back in the first inning. The Gohawks lead at 3 nothing. The Vikings have only had three hits all night. Two of them have been by Lindsey Smith ever since the second inning of game one. Lindsey has been Decorah's only base runner. It's the pitch high and tight, and Lindsey hit by the pitch. She tried to drop the bat and get it out of the way, and Lindsey ends up getting hit in the forearm. And that's the first time since inning two of game number one that the Vikes have gotten their leadoff runner on. And Chelsea Twait fly to right her first time up, and she'll look at first one high, one ball, no strikes. Twait's had a nice week, nine for 16, coming in with four home runs as the pitch taken high. It is two balls, no strikes on Twait with Shelton on deck. We're in the fourth inning of game number two, Go Hawks leading. 3-0 on the three-run homer by Emily Brown. Pitch swung on a fly ball right field. Down the line, if it's fair, it's gone, but it goes foul. The ball left the yard, but it ends up about 10 feet to the right of the 180 pole. And a little in back of it as well. Two balls, one strike to count. Twait hit one to the fence in center field. In game number one, as that one popped down the left field line and angling into foul ground to Sherburn, she will make a running catch. A nice play at shortstop by April Sherburn, who had a long way to run, but she was able to run it down. Smith was playing it off the bag at first base, and she ends up staying put. And Lexi Shelton will come to the plate, struck out looking in the first 0 for 1. 3 nothing Go Hawks here in the fourth. Pitch to Lexi is a riser high from Roddick. One ball, no strikes. Pitch swing and a pop-up foul. Right side, not a play. And that one puts Dent in the school on the right side. One ball, one strike, count with one down. Pitch to Shelton as another rise ball up. It's two balls, one strike. The 2 1 delivery. And that one inside as Roddick misses on a fastball. It's three balls, one strike now. Shelton in a hitter's paradise with one on, one out here in the fourth. The 3-1 delivery, ball four as the rise ball goes high. And Lexi Schultz becomes the first player other than Lindsey Smith to reach base since the second inning of game number one for Cora. And out to the circle goes Emily Brown to talk to Cassie Rotting. T.O. will take advantage of the time and talk to Maria Hoyme halfway between Third base and home plate. Conversations are done. Hoimi struck out looking her first time up. First and second, one down here in the fourth of a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock. The pitch to Maria Hoimi is a little bit low. It is one ball, no strikes. One ball, no strikes. The count with one down. The 1-0 delivery swung on and missed. Some heat from Moronic. It's one ball, one strike. One and one in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Same pitch, same result. And it's one and two now on Hoimi with Shelby Stolberger on deck.
Pitch outside, two and two. First and second, one down, pitch. Ooh, just missed the inside corner. On a fastball on the inside edge. Roddick brings a lot of heat. Hasn't thrown too many off-speed pitches to this point. And the 3-2 to Hoime swung out a blooper out in the right center field. And that went away in for a base hit. Stopping at third is Smith. Throw to second base, not in time to get Shelton on the force play. So a bloop single for Hoime, and now the base is loaded with one down. So Maria Hoime, who was hitless to that point on the night, gets her first hit, and Decora's second hit. Tying runs are on base, and Shelby Stahlberger, who tapped out to the catcher in the second inning, will stand up in. Infield up in the corners, back up the middle. Stahlberger takes a strike on the outside edge. It snowballs one strike. 3 nothing Go Hawks, but the Vikes with their best threat of the night right here. 0-1 delivery, swing and a foul back to the screen, so now it's no balls, two strikes on Stahlberger. O2 to Shelby. Riser well high. It's a one ball and two strike count. Smith third, Shelton second, Hoime first, pitch low and in. As Emily Brown moves to her left to stop the ball from going to the backstop. It's two balls, two strikes to count. Roddick ready, and the 2-2 delivery swung on, a little looper towards short, and Sherburn there to make the catch. And the second out of the inning is recorded. It'll be up to Tess Olinger to take advantage of this good opportunity for Decora. Two down, bases loaded, top of the fourth. Three at nothing, Waverly Showrock. Olinger grounded the second her first time up. She had the game-winning hit. In game two of the doubleheader against Walk On last night, and she fouls one back to the screen here. No balls, one strike on Tess. Oh one. Swung on and missed at a rise ball, and it's nothing in two. So Roddick gets ahead of two hitters in a row. After loading the bases, 0-2, and that one well outside. Missing on a rise ball. One ball and two strikes to count. Smith was hit by a pitch, and out later Shelton walked. A bloop single for Hoime. A pop out for Stahlberger, and it's now 1-2 and two on Olinger. As that one blooped towards third field, and on one hop nicely by Emerson, and she'll throw to first base. And Olinger retired, and the threat is squelched. One hit, and the Vikes lead them, leave them loaded. Emerson with a nice defensive play to close things out. We are halfway home in game two of this doubleheader. It's a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock. Mackenzie Lillibridge will start things here at the bottom of the fourth inning for Waverly Showrock. They lead to Cora 3 nothing, looking for the sweep tonight. Lillibridge looks the first one high. One ball, no strikes. Lillibridge struck out swinging in the first 0 for 1. 1-0 delivery, and that one taken for a strike. It is one ball and one strike count. And Emily Brown, three-run homer in the first inning. The difference to this point. Shelton ready in the 1-1. Taken high, taken outside. It's two balls and one strike. Nobody on, nobody out here in the fourth inning. And that one outside again from Shelton. It's three balls, one strike. Lexi walked two in that first inning. She has struck out three to this point as well. Shelton ready. 3-1 offering swing and a miss. One of the better change-ups we've seen in a while from Shelton there. And it's three balls and two strikes now. Shelton ready. 3-2 offering. Change-up swung out. Popped up down the left field side. Jurlett angling into foul ground. She will make the catch for the first out here in the fourth inning. So Peyton Jurlett 
Making her second pop-up catch on a foul out tonight. One down, nobody on, and Rachel Kurth to the plate. A 3 nothing lead for the Gohawks. Kurth popped out to short and Peyton Drillet to end the first 0 for 1. First pitch outside from Shelton. It is one ball and no strikes. one out. Pitch swinging a foul back to the screen. It is one ball and one strike to count. The one one delivery outside again. It's two balls, one strike from Shelton. Ever since a rocky start, Lexi has settled down quite nicely. Has only given up the one hit, a one out single to Stacy Martin in the third, and a one all the way back to the backstop right in front of us. And it's three balls, one strike. Shelton ready. And the 3 1 offering. That one taken low for ball four. Lexi with her third walk. Hartman walked six in game number one, and four of those ended up scoring. Lexi's walked three, and one has ended up scoring to this point. Andrea Grown, the batter for the Gohawks, leading 3 0. Grown looks at the first one low, and Stahlberger throws down on an attempted delayed steal, and Oimi trying to run her back to the bag, applies the tag for the second out of the inning. Kurth went about halfway. Stahlberger ended up throwing down to second. Kurth attacked the bag at second. Oimi made a leaping grab. Kurth tried to hustle her way back to first, but Maria... Got to her first as that one blooped on the right field line foul, and it's one ball, one strike on Grown. So A, credit an okay throw from Shelby, but it was a great grab by Maria at second. She hustled back to the bag and applied Kurth for the second out of the inning. Applied the tag for the second out of the inning. Pitch swung on, popped up, foul, right side out of play. It's now one ball, two strikes on Andrea Grown. That's a good way to help out your pitcher, putting on somebody via a base on balls. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Nothing across as Lexi faces the minimum here in inning number four. We head to the fifth. It is Waverly Shell Rock three and Decora nothing. Becca Alcock will lead things off here in the fifth inning. She flew out to left. In the first inning, and it looks at the first one high from Roddick. One ball, no strikes. Three nothing, Gohawks. Emily Brown, a three run homer in the first inning. The difference in this one. Like I said, bases loaded and one out in the fourth inning, but a pop out from Stahlberger and a ground out from Olinger ended the threat. It was a very nice defensive play by Briley Emerson, which got the ground out on Olinger. 1 1. Outside to Alcock. It's two balls, one strike. Coming up uh, on Saturday, Decorah will host the Decorah Tournament. They will open up play at 9 a.m. Decorah will play Valley Postville. And the pitch swung out and missed. It is two balls and two strikes. If Decorah wins that game, they will play at 2.30. If they lose that game, they will play at 1 p.m. The second round game will also be at Luther. The pitch swung out and missed. And all cocked out on strikes. And that's the third strikeout for Cassie Roddick. And Peyton Gerlid will bat with one down. Nobody on here in the fifth inning of a 3 nothing lead for Waverly Show Rocks. The pitch is in there for a strike. Nothing in one. The other half of the bracket. The second round game would either be against Riceville or Central Elkader. And then from there, it'll determine how how you do and where you play. So the next one outside of Peyton, it's one ball, one strike. Hartman to follow here in the fifth inning, a 3-0 lead for the Gohawks. One ball, one strike, and the pitch in there for a strike. It's one ball, two strikes, thanks to Athletic... Administrative Assistant Mary Herman for giving me that information. 
One ball, two strikes with one down. And the pitch swung on a one hopper, uh, gloved nicely by Roddink, and she'll field and throw to first base to retire Drillet. And there's two down here in the fifth inning. Two down, nobody on. Tori Hartman to the plate. Three nothing. Waverly Showrock. Hurtman has popped out to second twice, once in the first, once in the third. She grounds one towards right field. It's picked up out there and right by Groen, and she can't get a clean handle on it. Otherwise, she perhaps could have had a play at first base, but Hartman's going to get a two-out single here in the fifth inning. And Hartman, who was hitless a night ago and hitless so far tonight, is on base for the first time. In this doubleheader is Lindsey Smith, who's been on base twice, will bat. And she'll look at a strike on the outside edge. No balls, one strike. Lins with an infield single in the first inning. She was also hit by a pitch in the fourth. 0-1 delivery, ground ball toward short, fielded at short by Sherburn. Winds up and throws to first base to retire Smith. And that's that for the fifth inning. One hit, one left. We hit to the... Bottom half of the fifth inning, it is 3-0, Waverly Showrock. Bottom of the fifth inning, we go. It's a 3-0 lead for Waverly Showrock. The Emily Brown three-run homer in the first inning has held up as Brianna Spears swings and misses at the first offering of the fifth inning for Lexi Shelton, who's been pretty solid through four. Four innings, three hits, three walks, and three strikeouts, and all three runs have been earned. The old one delivery swung on, fouled back to the screen. There's no balls and two strikes. And the Vikes' defense has played errorless to this point. One swing of the bat has been the only uh, difference uh, to this point. The Brown home run as the pitch taken low. There's one ball, two strikes. We mentioned the Cora Valley Postville, Central Locator, Riceville on one side of the bracket coming up on Saturday. The pitch outside corner, strike three called. Spears down on strikes, one down here in the fifth inning. Five strikeouts for Shelton. And April Sherburn to the plate. And Sherburn looks at a strike, nothing at one. She doubled and scored in the first inning and flew out to center in the second inning. The other teams that will be there, Lansing Key, St. Ansgar, Turkey Valley, and Osage. 0-1 delivery He is taken for a strike. It is no balls. And two strikes on April Sherburn. A 3 nothing lead for Waverly Showrock as we play at the bottom of the fifth inning. 0-2 delivery taken outside for one ball, two strikes. One and two the count. Pitch, one hopper, glove nicely by Lexi Shelton and a throw to first base will retire April Sherburn. That ball was going to Lexi's right. She reached back with the left hand. Of course, the glove hand. Lunge picks it up and threw on to first base to retire Sherburn as Emerson fouls at third base side. Now to play. No balls and one strike. Emerson struck out looking the first and fly to left in the second. 0 for 2. 3 nothing Gohawks as we play the bottom of the fifth inning. Go Hawk pitching has been the main story tonight. Demuth threw a two-hitter in game number one. And Cassie Roddick working on a two-hit shutout, or a three-hit shutout here in game number two. The pitch goes low. It's one ball and one strike. One-one. Outside. Two balls and one strike. The count. Two one swung on, popped up, foul ball, third base side. That one gonna land to the right of the third base dugout for Decora. It's two balls, two strikes on Briley Emerson. Two and two the count. And the two two delivery a change up that is taken low. It's three balls, two strikes now. Yeah. 
3-2. Swing and a foul at the plate. So Emerson has seen six pitches now in this at-bat. She saw 12 in her last at-bat. And she saw five in her first at-bat. So Lexi will throw the 24th pitch to Emerson tonight. And the pitch is taken low for ball four. That'll be the fourth walk of the night. For Waverly Showrock, a runner at first and two down, and Stacy Martin to the plate. And a 3 0 lead for the Go Hawks. Martin walked and scored in the first and single to the left in the third. Shelton ready, and the pitch is outside. One ball, no strikes. One oh. Change up taken for a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. One one. Pitch taken outside, throw down to second base is not in time. So Briley Emerson moves into scoring position. It's two and one. Now on Martin. As Emerson steals her 20th base of the season, she is 20 for 20 in that category. 2-1 2-1 delivery. Outside corner taken for a strike, and the deuce is now wild at 2-2. Two and two. Two, and 2 the count. Lexi ready at the 2-2. Two, two. Swing a roller to the right side. Picked up there by Maria Hoyme and throws on to first base to retire Stacy Martin and the side in the fifth. A walk and a runner left. We head to the sixth inning. It is 3-0 Waverly Showrock. Chelsea Twait will start things here in the sixth and look at a strike, nothing in one. Twait fly to right in the first and fouled out to short in the sixth inning. April Sherburn made a very nice play on that play. As the Twait swings and grounds one towards third. Emerson picks it up, winds up and throws to first base to retire Twait. And one down here in the sixth inning. So Roddick has hit one, walked one, given up only now, pitcher, 11, three hits. And Lexi Shelton will stand in, struck out looking in the first, walked in the fourth. Bikes had the bases loaded, one out in the first as Lexi, t- or in the fourth rather. Lexi takes a strike, nothing in one. But a Stolberger pop out, an Olinger ground out. Ended that threat. The 0-1 delivery taken for a strike, and it's nothing in two. Nothing in two on Shelton as the pitch inside. It is one ball, two strikes now. The 1-2 delivery. Lexi thought about chasing the rise ball and thought better of it holding up for a 2-2 and count. Two and 2-2 two the count. And the pitch. Inside corner, strike three call. So Roddick with another strikeout. It'll be four on the night for her. One walk, one hit batter, no errors in game number one. Gohox had two errors and no walks in game number one as the pitch swung on and missed by Hoime. No balls, one strike. Hoime struck out looking in the first and single right in the fourth. One for two. She has one of the three hits for Decora. The 0-1 taken up. One ball, one strike. One and one the count with two down, so... Good teams don't make a heck of a lot of mistakes, and the Gohawks haven't done that tonight. Pitch swung on foul back to the screens. Between the two games, one walk, one hit batter, and two errors. And the one was kind of me perhaps being a hard you-know-what. Here's a roller right back to Roddick. She'll throw to first base to retire Hoyme, and the Vikes go quietly. Three up, three down for the third time in six frames. The Vikes... Go one, two, three. We head to the bottom of the six. It's three nothing to Cora. Trailing Waverly Shellrock. 
Go Hawks looking for some insurance here in the sixth inning as they lead it 3-0. The first batter of this sixth inning will be the person responsible for all of the runs tonight. Emily Brown had a three-run homer in the first inning, and it is held up to this point. Go Hawk pitching has kept the... Viking bats at bay. Only five hits and one run tonight. Brown, a three-run homer in the first to fly out to center in the third. As the pitch taken low, it is one ball, no strikes. That fly out was to deep center field as the pitch taken outside. Two balls, no strikes. Two O's, swing and a miss. Two balls, one strike. Probably a few too many walks for Lexi with four on the night, but all in all. Not too bad of a performance by her. Here's a fly ball deep right field. Retreating is Chelsea Twait. She is at the fence. She lunges up, and she can't get there, and it's going to be a home run the second of the night for Emily Brown. Brown, who had a three-run homer in the first inning, it's a solo shot here in the sixth, and a run of insurance for the Gohawks. They lead it 4-0. So Brown with seven RBIs on the night. And now six home runs on the season. Her RBI total has increased from 24 to 31 here this evening. By the way, this is Vikings Radio 1240 KDEC Decora and KDECradio.net. Allie Earns will bat for the Go Hawks. Now leading 4 nothing. The pitch taken high. It's one ball, no strikes. Go Hawks trying to win their 20th game of the season. And the pitch is taken low, and it rolled in there from Shelton. One ball, one strike, count. Pitch swung out, popped up, foul ball. Third base side, and out of play. And... Shelton gets a strike on Arns. It's now 2-1, and one. the 2-1. Ground ball towards third. It's a foul ball as Iverson fields it to the left of the bag. Waverly Shellrock in the girls' softball pole, ranked number 10 right now in Class 4A. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch swinging a Foul on a rise ball from Shelton. It's still two balls, two strikes. As the only team that I, or I take that back, Crestwood is ranked 10th in 3A. Those are the two teams in the Northeast Iowa Conference that have ranked. Here's a ground ball deflected by Shelton towards Maria Hoyme at second. She'll pick it up and throw out her fellow second sacker. And there's one down here in the sixth inning. One on, one out. And Mackenzie Lillibridge, the designated player, will look at a strike. Nothing going to want. Lillibridge struck out swinging in the first and fouled to short in the fourth. A 4 nothing lead for Decora here in the sixth. Here's ground ball off the glove of Iverson. Fielded at short by Drillin. And she couldn't field the deflection. So that'll be the first error of the night. Vikings have played pretty solid defense. Included in the solid defense has been some above average plays tonight. And Rachel Kurth will bat with one on, one out, and one in. As the first pitch taken high, one ball, no strikes. one Swing and a pop-up foul. 
Back to the screen. It is one ball and one strike. One one from Shelton. Change up swung on a foul at the plate. One and two now from Shelton. Vikes trail it four nothing here in the sixth. The pitch swung on and missed. A foul tip into the glove of the catcher Stahlberger for the second out of the inning. So two down, one on, one in. Bikes will have Stahlberger, Olinger, and Elkak do in the seventh inning. Andrea Groen to the plate, fly to center and struck out in the second and the fourth, respectively, and grounds foul. Third base side. All four runs tonight. A three run homer for Emily Brown in the first and a solo shot here in the sixth inning. The pitch looped towards second, and a diving catch is made by Maria Hoyme on at second, and that will retire the side. I tell you what, Maria's had her struggles defensively at times this year, but she has played some pretty good second base tonight. One run, one hit, one error, one left. Vikes need four to keep it going. They trail at 4 nothing. Top of the seventh we go. Vikes need four to keep this thing going, as Shelby Stahlberger will start things here in the seventh inning. Stahlberger 0 for 2. She grounded to the catcher in the second and popped a short in the fourth. That one looped towards the third base side. And Riley Emerson will make a running catch in the third base coaching box. And one pitch, one out here in the seventh inning. One down, nobody on. Tess Olinger to the plate for Decora. Trailing 4 nothing as... Cassie Roddick working on a three-hit shutout. Pitch inside. One ball, no strikes. Olinger grounded to second in the second and ended the fourth inning by grounding to third. 1-0, swung out, popped up on the infield. Sherburn at short will make the catch to the right of the second base bag and quickly two up, two down here in the seventh inning. Two down, nobody on. And the last hope of the night is Becca Alcock for Decora. Alcock fly to left in the third, struck out swinging in the fourth. Roddick working on a three-hit shutout, and Becca takes the strike, nothing in one. Roddick trying to go to 6-1 and one on the season. And the pitch to Alcock swung on and missed. It is nothing in two. So Decora down to their last strike. The Gohawk pitching has been the difference tonight. The 0-2 changeup just missed the outside edge. And it's one ball, two strikes to count. One and two, a two down. And a one-two delivery swing and a miss, and the Gohawks sweep the Vikings in tonight's doubleheader. Gohawks take this one four to nothing. Four runs, four hits. No errors and four left for the Gohawks. No runs, three hits, one error, and five left for the core up. Cassie Roddick, the winning pitcher, six and one. Lexi Shelton threw well after that first inning. She's the losing pitcher. Maybe a bit of a hard luck loss tonight. And she is now five and eight. Gohawks go to twenty and five overall, eleven and one in conference play. The Cora drops to nine and thirteen overall and five and eight in conference play. Many people to thank for making this broadcast possible. First and foremost, our advertisers, the good sports-minded people who helped us bring the game wherever you were tonight. Without their help, this coverage would not be possible. So, as always, we encourage you to support the businesses who support local high school sports. And lastly and most importantly, we thank you. That's right, you, the listener, for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the broadcast, if not the outcome. Go Hawks take two tonight. One in game one by a six-to-one margin. And they take game two by a four to nothing margin. We'll have baseball on the air tomorrow night as the Decora Viking baseball team takes on Owen at Owenzak Field. 7.20 will be the start time for that one. So for our entire KDEC sports team, Darren Swenson saying so long. 
from Waverly. Go Hawks take two, 6-1 and 4 nothing. Thanks much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow night.